Hi, this is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy. Today we're going to talk about climbing the emotional scale for this week's 52-week video blog, week three of the year. Please visit my website, healthalchemy.com, if you'd like to get more information, schedule an appointment, or see some awesome free information. So when I talk about climbing the emotional scale, there's something that we should really preface this with, and that's we can't climb out of where we are until we fully acknowledge where we are. And there's a document on my website, healthalchemy.com. Um, it's right up on the header, it's called Climbing the Emotional Scale. And there's a page that you can print out, and you click on a link. And I think that's a good place to start, is just to say one of the statements I make in the first paragraph is, you know, we're not going to get out of where we are until we fully dive into where we are. And that's some, um, I'll just use myself as an example today. Today, um, day three of a cleanse, a bit discouraged. I broke yesterday and had a cup of coffee, even only on, it was only day two of the cleanse. And so there's this thing that happens in a lot of us, like in me, it's, I call it the judge. And the judge ends up being a big energy drain because it's just sucking energy that's unnecessary. And so um, one of the things I do is just feeling the expectations I had to myself and then um, really feeling into like, what is that guy? And the judge at his best is discerning, and he tells us what is green and what is blue, and um, what someone looks like. Tells us how to discern different smells. So the thing there about the judge is to see discernment versus judgment, and judgment always has a charge to it. So one of the things that I look at then again is to get myself up to the next level on the emotional scale. I might use. For example, blame is a good one. Or even doubt about what I did in the first place, or even becoming disappointed in myself, has more charge to it than blame typically. Um, I can even feel overwhelmed. And there's more charge that we're trying to do is fully acknowledge where we are and then move up to the next level. So we're going to climb. We're never going to get from despair, powerlessness, grief, depression, deep, deep fear. We're never going to get there. We're never going to get to joy right away. Um, we might be able to, and I wouldn't doubt that I have in my own life, but it's always nicer to say, like, another example in this is, in my own life when I was sort of angry and someone was playing what I would call at the time the woo-woo spiritual music or something that was really really like over the top happy you know like when you get that sense of somebody that they almost seem so happy they're fake that's kind of how the music felt to me at the time and i would just get more angry and so only listening to sort of angry punk rock music at the time would help me and so the state to get out of anger um for me the a higher state was blame so i would blame the system blame the system for feeling making me feel this way Blame the government for making our lives so difficult and feeding the rich while the poor get nothing. Um, blame my parents for my conditioning. Blame school for taking all my time. And then um, this is something I just did naturally and unconsciously, and we all tend to do it. Like if we know we're going to be dead in a month and we get diagnosed with cancer, well, we might go to anger, you know, and that has more charge to it than complete powerlessness, which is often how my clients feel, you know, when they're diagnosed with something and they come in my office and they're crying within five minutes of seeing me. So climbing the emotional scale is choosing a way to, choosing a way to really be where we are. And then even if we just rest in the pure awareness or the discernment of where we are, oftentimes, um, as I've said in last week's video blog, you know, awareness has a certain digestive property to it. And it really, I can't underemphasize this enough, is that the state of grace, the state of salvation is in recognizing that awareness does have a link to what we are ultimately. And there's just so much charge in that just to let yourself sort of be digested. And that's really kind of a profound statement, you know, let yourself be digested. Um, I let myself be digested when I meditate. I don't meditate nearly as much as I used to, but partially because I have a higher degree of consciousness in my being than I did years ago, and I don't feel like, this part of me doesn't feel like I have to remain this constant vigilance about 
oh, I just got to stay awake because it's so painful to be asleep at the wheel. And it is. It's even more painful now, but I just trust more now, and there's more trust in my system, I guess. And um, So let's look at the, the sheet that I have here that you, anyone can look at at healthalchemy.com. Is, you know, if we're in fear, then get angry or find something, even revenge, even vengefulness, but you don't act on it. You just let your imagination play out because you'll notice if you're really honest with yourself that something's playing this stuff out anyways. And if you can't get access to it, then try and get access to it, you know, because it's there on some level. Um, and then if you're closer to the upper levels of the emotional scale, so we start at fear and grief and despair and powerlessness and insecurity and guilt might even have more charge than powerlessness because at least with guilt or unworthiness there's something to be unworthy about powerlessness is often there's just a void of apathy find something to get jealous about with someone or envious there's more charge there um, even hate and rage are working our way up the scale here have more um, revenge is a really interesting thing because if you notice, all these lower level ones, we're always bouncing off against something. I have something to hate, something to be envious about, something to be guilty about, something to be angry about, something to be discouraged about, something to blame, doubting myself, being disappointed in myself as we work our way up, feeling overwhelmed, and there's always something we're pushing off against, right? And again, it comes back to that salvation of pure awareness. As I once wrote, um, the sky will allow anything and if you tie those together, that the sky and awareness are sort of analogous. Clouds in the sky are like thought forms in, in awareness. And awareness doesn't care what's moving through it, ultimately. And um, that's the beauty of love right there, is just to see that awareness itself doesn't care. I mean, it cares, but it, we can't humanize something that's not human. Just as the Taoist said, you can't label the Tao. And that's what I'm pointing out here. And part of me getting myself out of my discouragement and a little low energy today on day three of my cleanse is helping someone. It's putting myself out there. And that's another fast way to really help ourselves is to step out of our own narcissistic little myopic bubble and just get out there and help somebody. Do something for somebody else. Make a phone call. And that's what one of my teachers said recently. So once we get up past overwhelmed, then we get to frustration and irritated. And frustration is a really juicy one. And you know you're getting close to something good um, because you know you've got some creative juices and there's something trying to come out, but you can't get past this block, right? And that's just, you're just so close to the threshold. Frustration in Chinese medicine, I remember once, uh, a book once said, it's just stifled creativity. Because the dream that we feel, that we see, that we imagine, we're trying to make it into form and it's not coming. And um, we could be frustrated with someone in traffic, you know, when we're driving. Or we can be frustrated with an animal we're trying to hunt, you know, we can be frustrated with our golf game. But ultimately, um, you know, it's usually based in something that's creative happening and we're stifled in our life. Um, so you'll note that boredom is placed above frustration. And the, the table I've taken here is based on uh, Abraham Hicks's book, um, Ask and It Is Given. And they very clearly state, and my experience very clearly sees that you know, you're going to have a different level here, and you have to find your way around this for yourself. These you are know, somewhat arbitrary labels I put here. But boredom means that, you know, you've, you've kind of like tried out a lot of other things, and there's always something to get interested in. And all boredom is, is I think, is just, for me, was just I'm not looking, I'm not asking the right question, I'm not looking in the right place. And then 25 years ago, I was at a party like a keg party, and this girl came up to me and she says, gosh, you look bored. Um, she said, you're not having a good time. And, and I looked at her and I go, you know, I was in my early 20s at the time, you know, I haven't been bored in years, I realized, um, because she was using a projection. And that's one of the things I realized when I was younger was I don't need to take on someone else's projection. You know, she saw me sitting alone, and I often I liked sitting alone at parties and just observing and people watching and um, not engaging and just really taking in the situation. And so I said, you know, I've been bored in years, and, and we ended up having and becoming friends because of that, because she really thought about it. She's like, wow, that's really cool that you could find interest in even just sitting there. Once we get past boredom, then we get to some of the more positive emotions like contentment and satisfaction. Um, 
Because contentment and satisfaction, if it goes on too long, can ultimately lead to apathy. So finding another thing to get interested in and then hope and optimism are great to have. And they're something, things that I always try and use positive mental attitudes. And often if I'm really in a state of depression, I can often even just use hope and jump about you know, 20 emotional levels up to hope because I've been doing this for so long. And hope is a good thing to have. Um, always finding something you can look forward to. It may not turn out that way, but at least it's something to look forward to. And then optimism, you know, optimism is a bit higher than hope because it's, it's just, we just know it. We can feel it. Like, you know, like you, you know you're going on this trip or you know 12 o'clock is going to come and you're going to get off for your lunch break or you know that summer is coming eventually. You know, those are things that we, we're optimistic about. And then positive expectation and belief is sort of the same thing as optimism, but um, I think that we can find, to get out of that level, we can find something to be grateful for. And then we get to some of the, the highest level of emotion, and we can't actually strive to be in these, I don't think, other than we can just, um, they're pointers that we're in a great alignment with our life, and that's enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is, the base of that word is in theos, or in residing in God. And that's pretty cool. So when you're enthusiastic, someone says, geez, you're so enthusiastic. It actually means you're somewhat merged with the divine. And you and the divine are totally lined up, and you're co-creating a good situation and a good life. Or eagerness. Or you're passionate. Now, passion is a strange thing, because passion can have a lot of other sort of negative things with it, like um, someone who's highly sexually passionate. That There could be something driving that that's not necessarily you know being aligned with God. It can be just passion to um, get your rocks off. But nevertheless, there is a lot of energy there. And the highest levels are joy and empowerment and freedom, and appreciation, feeling open, feeling connected. For me, these are mine. Feeling grateful. Because my Mankind Project and my men's work, my Mankind Project uh, mission statement is I create a world of harmony by connecting. I create brightness by shining and it's not that I'm actually doing it, but I'm just aligned with my life and then I feel fully present. I feel connected to myself right in here in my heart and I feel connected to others. And this takes time. I used to be numb and didn't even know it, didn't know I wasn't connecting with people and some part of me knew and was striving to get there. So try this on for size. I'd love to hear any comments you have. Um, I'm always available for a reply. Even if it takes me a week, I will get back with you. And I just hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And check out healthalchemy.com. H-E-L-H-E-A-L-T-H-A-L-K-E-M-Y. Healthalchemy.com. Um, and get support in your life and support others. I think you'll find that connecting in this way is going to be very profound for you. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day.